going to show you a technique that I ran across today. This is more for folks who are not frustrated with the fine line paint applicators. They are one of my favorite tools and I love learning new things that I can do with paint in one of these little bottles. What I did was today I participated in the Art Joy of Sharing Pick a Stick Challenge. And it was live. I will put a link to their live session in my description box below. But I worked right along with them. So when they issued a new challenge, I followed right along. You can't see it very well. You can see it somewhat in the bottom in here, right in there. The very first layer was add paint with bubble wrap. And then that was add stars, add glitter, use a matte medium, which is what I use to add the glitter, drip paint. You can see my drippy paints on here, doodle around the border. I do have stars in my border, but I also put an edging around it. Use a marker. I used a silver marker on this in various places, and I'm really happy with how it came out. But what I wanted to show you was one of the challenges was to use a straight edge. And I have my metal ruler, and that's how I got this big star on here was with my straight edge. But what was so different about it is I used my fine line paint applicator to draw the lines. And it was really fun to see how I could run that fine line paint applicator along the edge of the ruler to achieve those straight lines. Usually we just kind of paint with it really free and that's okay, but there are some things that I want to show you that I learned just in doing this big star. Isn't this a fun page? Go back and look at shells and pegs pages. Really pretty. Okay, now I'm going to pull this off to the side. I have this little photograph book that I've been doing different techniques in for my fine line paint applicator. The basic lattice basic dots, scribble enhanced. Here I used a piece of wax paper that I collaged down, but it already had this very renaissance type chain on it. I really do like that going back and look at it. I might play more with that. Here was drawing the same renaissance type chain on a piece of different backgrounds of scrapbook paper. Here I did a lattice with floral. And then my last one was this basic filet type stitch, which is a crochet, simulated crochet stitch. So I'm ready to do my next technique. And that's what I want to work with with my straight edge today. I'm going to move these out of the way. I'm going to zoom in just a little so you can get a better view of this page. I will tell you right at first, when you're working with this, you need to work in an area of the page where you will not be coming back to it until that paint is dry. And as I move my ruler down, I'm going to go down diagonally. I want to go across areas of the page that are dry so I don't smear this. This will be my second time doing this technique. I experimented with it on the pick a stick challenge page and I thought it was such a neat technique that I thought that I would try it and put it in my technique book here. So all I'm doing is I'm putting the tip of the nozzle right next to my metal ruler and I'm just drawing a line. Now I see that it's smeared a little and of course I'm going to have some paint on my ruler Let's just ignore those. It's, it's going to happen. So let's, let's do it like that. I like that line a lot better.
Now, when you're working on an art journal page, generally those type of smears do not bother folks. I do have some dollar store hand sanitizer. I'm keeping this on my desk now. I'm going to clean off the edge of my ruler. I keep it on my desk to help me stay just a little bit neater. As you can see on my desktop, I'm not too concerned about neatness on my that's why I put this drop paper down, and I like all the smears and everything on my drop paper. But I don't necessarily like it on the artwork that I'm doing, unless, unless it doesn't bother me. <laughs> See, I smeared there. But I like these nice, straight lines. And I found just as when I'm writing with my fine line paint applicator, if I just go to it, I mean, don't, don't worry about it, but just do it. Don't sit there and d dawdle over it. You'll get a nice, cleaner line, a more fun line, Than if you sit and worry about where your line, what's going to happen to your line. Just go right straight across. Now, I think I'm going to stop there. Clean my ruler off. And let's take my heat gun and dry this off a little. Now, it, it's it got some thicker spots in there. So, it might take a little while to dry. I'll come back when these lines are dry. What I'm doing for these pages is that I leave the right-hand side of the page for documenting the technique. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm only going to work to about here. So I'm going to take my ruler. This is, this is dry enough to work on for this experiment page. And I'm going to start drawing some horizontal lines. My ruler's pretty long for this, but let's just, and I'm just going to eyeball the line where I stop here. I might have to go back and even that up a little, but that's okay. And I don't care if it's not evenly spaced. I'm just playing at this point. But I do think it's important to keep your ruler. Just take a little alcohol on a paper towel and just run it across there to help keep it dry as you're working across the page. It's really kind of fun to do this. It's really a interesting approach to the page. Now see, I smudged that with my ruler, but I really do kind of like that. I'm going to go back and dry off these lines, and then I'll come back. I do kind of like this kind of a raggedy edge there. I'll come back when these lines are dry. Okay, I think it's dry enough to work on. There's a little, a few little wet spots in there, but that's okay. This is just a technique page. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Now I want to do some more... Let's have some more fun with this. Let's do some vertical lines. Shall we do it clear across this way? So the vertical lines will create more of an open area here, like what I have on this side. But when they go across this side, they will close up and make these areas more narrow. So I'm going to leave this raggedy edge here. I do like that. So let's, shall I put 
I'm going to put a vertical line on the outside so that I have this area separate. And if you are frustrated with the nozzle of your fine line paint applicator getting clogged up, of course, while you're working, just every now and then wipe off the nozzle. But I will tell you, dragging this nozzle through paint on the page, whatever you have on that page, dragging it through will pull up bits and pieces and tend to clog up your nozzle. So... I do try. Now here I am dragging it across and I'm having to wipe my nozzle off a little bit more often. But if you are drawing or writing on your page, don't let your nozzle touch the bottom of the page. Keep it just a teeny bit above and the paint will flow out of it as you put pressure on there. That way you aren't dragging the nozzle of the fine line paint applicator through the media that you already have on the page clogging up that little tiny spout on the nozzle. So, and the other thing I will tell you is you don't have to empty your paint out and wash all of the bottle out and everything after every use. That's kind of ridiculous. But if you unscrew the cap, unscrew this yellow portion, and take, it up, take the cap all apart and run it under some running water. And I actually run it through and I take the cap, the little needle point here. Let's see if I can get it in. Like this. And while it's running under water, I'll hold it and I'll push this cap up and down you got it the bottle's not attached but i let the water run through the cap and i'll push this up and down and that will let water fall into the little tip of the nozzle and then while that water's in there i'm cleaning out the nozzle while it's under the water and then after i've got all that clean and then you know every now and then i'll dump the cap of the water out and put in fresh water in there and that's how I clean out my fine line paint applicators especially the nozzle you'll want to do that quite often and I guarantee you your nozzles will not clog up as much and you'll notice that when I'm using my fine line paint applicators especially when I start I'll take my cap and just pounce it up and down that just kind of clears out everything in that's inside of the nozzle and then I'll go off over to the side on my drop paper and just squeeze a little out to make sure that it's flowing. this has to dry so I'm going to use my heat gun and I'll be right back now can you see the difference see how when I'm getting more lines in here it's more of a dense area than here I just have two lines they're basically squares and I love this fringed part in here but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with this area here a little bit more I want more of a distinction so I'm going to put some diagonals across just this area. I'm even going to close them up more. liking this. Look how dense this is to how sparse. This is pretty just much wide open. It's very geometric. But I love these straight lines in here. And I like these. Now I'm going to play with these. I, I kind of like that. I like these I like these dots on my 
pages, these dotty lines. And especially if I'm doing like a doily or something, they just add a certain elegance to the page. They are rather thick, so I'll have to wait for them to dry. But look, I've got them here too. So on the ends of these lines, I'm going to put some dots. And this is the point to where I generally start playing with my design. And that's why I don't mind all these little white spots in here. Because to tell you the truth, you may think, oh, disaster. But they generally fall into the background of the page unless they're absolutely horrible. Now, I think I'm going to play with putting some dots at different places in here. I just want to document I have my little sample area in here it's not quite as detailed I did play with letting these lines go outside kind of like that I'm just going to write on here this is just craft paint, undiluted, no water, no nothing in my fine line paint applicator. I use Apple Barrel craft paint that I get at Walmart. Now, other types of craft paint have different thicknesses and, and I, it may be thinner than what you want. I like the Apple Barrel, it just, and it's craft paint. Different media will react differently, but I really like the embossed feel that I get with this. So, there's my technique page. I hope you've enjoyed watching this and maybe try this sometime. I will say I do think this is more of an advanced technique. I think beginners might get bored with doing all those lines with a straight edge, but they may not either. You know, if you're a very detailed person, if you want this very mechanical geometric look, I think this is the way to go. And I was thinking as I was doing this, that there are different shape rulers out on the market to where you can take your fine line applicator and put it against an object. In fact, we could try different things like a a credit card. Let's just do that right down in here. This Here again, this page is a technique page. It doesn't really have to have an artistic meaning to it or be artistically beautiful. It's just experimenting with what you can do with 
different techniques and what you can do with your tools. Because the more you experiment, the more you experiment with doing these types of things, the more ideas you'll come up with. If you only use one idea of just drawing with your, you know, just putting paint on your page, if you ever, if that's the only thing you do, you never really learn what your art tools can do for you. Now, I'm liking that. So I'm going to go clean the nozzle of my applicator and clean off my ruler and call this finished. I'm really happy with this. I have another page in my little technique book. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next page.